In 1998 and early 1999, Militinovich was involved in the negotiations involving representatives of the Kosovo-Albanian community and those brokered by the international community to seek to resolve the Kosovo crisis. Having analyzed the voluminous evidence in relation to all these negotiations, the Chamber is not satisfied that that evidence establish, establishes that Militinovic had an obstructive attitude aimed at ensuring their failure as submitted by the prosecution. The evidence led by the prosecution also did not convince the chamber that Militinovic had a close personal or professional relationship with Milosevic or that he held a position of significant influence in the Socialist Party of Serbia, the dominant political party at that time. These allegations are among several made by the prosecution about Militinovic's involvement in events that have not been proved. Militinovic attended a number of meetings in 1998 and early 1999, during which the situation in Kosovo was discussed, some of them in Kosovo itself. The chamber finds that he was relatively well informed about that situation and that he was aware that criminal acts had been committed by VJ and MOOC forces in Kosovo, both in 1998 and early 1999, mainly through his dealings with foreign diplomats, negotiators, and observers. However, he was also told by state officials that any crimes that had been committed in Kosovo were dealt with, or were being dealt with. The chamber finds that as the president of Serbia, Militinovic had powers that could potentially allow for significant oversight of the work of the Serbian government ministries, most importantly, the Ministry of Interior. But the evidence does not establish extensive interaction between Militinovic and the MOOC in the relevant period, and his de facto powers over the MOOC were not significant. He issued several decrees during the state of emergency that came into force on 23rd March 1999. However, for the reasons set out in detail in the judgment, the chamber is unable to draw any inferences adverse to him from the evidence surrounding these decrees. In addition to being a deputy prime minister of the FRY, Nikola Shainovich was the chairman of the FRY Commission for Cooperation with the OSCE Kosovo Verification Mission, a body set up following the various agreements concluded in October 1998 by the FRY and Serbian authorities and the international community. The indictment alleges that he was FRY President Milosevic's personal representative for Kosovo and that he was the head of a body called the Joint Command, which had authority over the VJ and MOOC forces deployed in Kosovo in 1998 and early 1999 until the end of the NATO air campaign. A significant amount of time during the trial proceedings was devoted by the prosecution and the Shinovich defense to the issue of the existence, powers, and functioning of the Joint Command. <coughs> this evidence is detailed in Volume 1 of the judgment. The Chamber finds that a body known by some as the Joint Command did come into existence in mid-1998. <coughs> in order to coordinate the activities of the VJ and MOOP and other state bodies involved in the Kosovo conflict. Notes of meetings of the Joint Command held between July and October 1998, taken by one of the participants, were entered into evidence and gave insight into the nature of the body. These notes reveal that Shinovich was an active participant in joint command meetings, as were the accused Pavkovic and Lukic, 
and on occasion Lazarevich. Indeed, Shinovich issued instructions at the meetings, including in relation to matters concerning the activities of the VJ and MOOP. There is direct evidence of only one joint command meeting in 1999 in June, but military orders were, were issued with a joint command heading in order to ensure the cooperation and coordination of MOOP forces with the VJ. Shinovich also attended a number of other high-level meetings concerning the situation in Kosovo in 1998 and 1999 and was often present in Kosovo both in 1998 and during the NATO air campaign. The FRY president was instrumental in sending him to Kosovo from the summer of 1998 and in his appointment as the chairman of the Commission for Cooperation with the Kosovo Verification Mission in October 1998 which enabled him to continue liaising with VJ and MOOC personnel in Kosovo, as well as the international observers there. His dealings with and influence over the accused Pavkovic from the VJ and Lukic from the MOOC therefore continued without interruption. Shinovich met with Milosevic frequently during 1998 and early 1999, as well as speaking with him by telephone. And a number of witnesses gave evidence about the nature of the relationship between the two men. On the basis of this evidence, the chamber finds that Shinovich was one of the closest and most trusted associates of Milosevic which led to him taking a leading role in both the Joint Command and the Commission for Co Cooperation with the KVM. He was a powerful official in the FRY government who not only relayed information to Milosevic and conveyed Milosevic's instructions to those in Kosovo, but also had a great deal of influence over events in the province and was empowered to make decisions. Shinovic met with former Kosovo Albanian political leader Ibrahim Rugova during the NATO airstrikes in a period when Rugova was effectively being held under house arrest. The chamber does not consider these meetings to have been a genuine attempt to negotiate a solution to the Kosovo situation but rather a campaign which involved threats to the personal safety of Rugova and his associates, designed to show that the FRY and Serbian authorities were meeting with Kosovo Albanians in the hope that this would lead to cessation of the NATO bombing. Shinovic knowingly and willfully participated in this campaign. The Chamber also finds that Shinovich was very well informed about events in Kosovo, both in 1998 and 1999, and that he was aware that criminal acts had been committed by VJ and MOOP forces in Kosovo, both in 1998 and 1999, including during the NATO airstrikes. Shinovich failed to use his extensive authority in Kosovo and his own initiative to ensure the cessation of such criminal conduct. Dragoljub Oydenic became the chief of the general staff, the highest position within the VJ at the end of 1998, <coughs> replacing Momchilo Perisic, who was removed by Milosevic. Prior to this elevation, he had been the deputy chief of the general staff. As Chief of the General Staff, Oydenich was only subordinate to the civilian authorities in which overall command of the VJ was vested, namely the Supreme Defence Council. The Chamber is convinced that as Chief of the General Staff, Oydenich exercised command and control over all units and organs of the VJ. He worked closely with the FRY president before and during the NATO air campaign and exercised 
de facto as well as de jure authority over the VJ. He did not, however, have direct control over MOOC forces engaged in Kosovo, despite orders for the resubordination of the MOOC to the VJ <coughs> issued in April 1999. As Chief of the General Staff, Oydenich attended SDC meetings and was an active participant in the discussions held. The evidence does not establish that he participated in the body known as the Joint Command, but he was aware of it and accepted its operation. The Chamber finds that Oydenich was aware and approved of the breaches of the October agreements that occurred in late 1998 and early 1999. In addition, he was aware of VJ involvement in the arming of the non-Albanian civilian population in Kosovo. He also supported the appointment of VJ personnel to high-level posts who either supported the activities of the VJ in Kosovo, such as the accused Pavkovic, or else simply raised no objection thereto, and was aware of the removal of high-level VJ officers who objected to the use being made of the VJ in Kosovo.